when we don't save, we implicitly blow out the current account. When we don't export anything like what we import, the trade balance, for most of the time, we implicitly blow out the current account. So the earlier slide of doubling debt over the period since 93 is an outcome of the things that we've driven people to do. But it's okay as long as I can retire to Papamoa. I don't care. Either this is too big for my ear or my ears too small. So we, 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 we don't care. And we have to think hard about how we seek to promote all productive investment. Focus on income statements, not balance sheets. Managed exchange rates clearly supports activity, uh, export activity. Singapore's managed its exchange rates since Singapore was Singapore. Uh, 40 years ago, Singapore was a third of the size of the New Zealand economy. Singapore is 30% bigger than New Zealand today. It, it chose different options. It chose to drive its balance sheets. It, it's the uh, income statement. Better returns support more innovation. If Salvin and I can make more money on the stuff we invest in, we're happy to keep tipping the money back into other things. But if there's no particular return for the investment, why are you going to do it? In fact, I think we nearly got drunk once. And it was the comment was, well, we could have actually made more money investing in houses. Mm -hmm. uh, but we thought that was boring. Probably wasn't smart not to, but there you go. Uh, innovation will help deal with the icebergs, whatever they are. <coughs> you know, uh, to help the disease itself, we've really got to break up the unholy alliance between production and processing. It has to break up. It just drives the whole system to volume. It doesn't drive the system to value. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's telling me I should start shutting up. Um, enhanced competition and production and processing levels. We have to deal with the Dutch disease directly. We have to deal with the Dutch disease and its impact on, on the world economy. Okay, uh, whatever we do, no matter <coughs> if we get every decision right, and we won't, it's going to take three to five years to start to see some sort of improvement, and to see a turnaround is probably the best part of a decade or so. These things are highly ingrained in the New Zealand psyche and the way that we think about the world. But wherever we're going to get to, we're going to get there quicker the sooner we start. And so, you know, help us find the exit. <coughs> the more people uh, that start to understand where we are, the more people will actually look through the the, the, the fog machine stop working now, but look through the fog and, and see that, that it is time to do something, that this ship just might bloody well sink. And we do need an option if that happens. The sooner that pressure starts to build on the decision-making system. Uh, if you really understand that, you as individuals understand that, you can show more leadership, persuading other people, putting pressure on the system. And I, uh, internalizing, what can we actually do ourselves? We could make decisions, for example, not to make the sort of investments in property and land and farms and put it somewhere else because of realization that that's going nowhere for most of New Zealand. And it's rewarding, or it is providing a gain relatively few. Does anybody know how many dairy farms are in New Zealand? No. Other than David Parker. Right? <laughs> it, it's 
around 12,000, is that right? Yeah, good enough. 12,000 farms, now run the numbers, just take those numbers I put up and start to do some calculations. Just see how much tax the entire area must be paid in a good year. And it wasn't very much. So I'll just close and say uh, to the young people, I need you to have a job because I need somebody to look after me when I'm older. Um, to us all, we need to find the Thank you. Um, one of the things I really liked about that, thank you John, uh, was that it underlined and tied in with the two speeches that came before it, uh, because it touched on generational issues and it touched on resource issues. And I was trying to decide uh, which line I liked best. Um, I started with the only money's in capital gains, that's the way we set the rules, and then we make mistakes when we know we're right, and I ended up, I think, liking best, we can choose to do it like we've chosen not to. And I think there's a big list in that. And, and uh, in the tweets, uh, Jordan Carter was very <coughs> pleased to see some structural solutions being advanced. He would say that. Uh, Irina said, I wish John Wally was my uncle. <laughs> Good candidate, I think. And um, yeah, Alistair Thompson um, noted, of course, the line about 120 MPs owning 300 houses and turkeys voting for an early Christmas. <laughs> Our next speaker needs no introduction, but I'm up here, so I'll do one anyway. Uh, before coming to New Zealand, he held a variety of posts at the Financial Times. When he's not